and welcome to today's webinar, where we're going to be discussing the residence programs and investment opportunities in Anguilla. My name is Chris Willis. I will be your host today. I'm the Managing Director of Latitude Consultancy, and I focus predominantly on program delivery and government advisory. As a matter of fact, I was very involved in the creation of the programs that we're going to be discussing today. Also joining us today, we're delighted to have the Premier of Anguilla, the Honourable Dr. Ellis Lorenzo Webster, the Honourable Carl Hodge, who's the Minister of Economic Development, Commerce, IT, Environment and Natural Resources, as well as Eric Major, the CEO of Latitude, Armand Artan, the CEO of Art and Capital, and Janelle Lake, who is the Operations Manager of Select Anguilla. We're going to be going through uh, the session uh, today and at the end we'll have a question and answer session. So please keep your questions till the end or you can use the Q&A tab on the bottom of your screen and then we can answer them as we go or line them up for, for discussion at the end. So thank you for joining us today and enjoy the webinar. I'm delighted to be joined by the Honorable Dr. Ellis Lorenzo Webster, the Premier of Anguilla and also the Minister of Finance and Health. Premier Webster, welcome. Um, I wanted to first of all congratulate you on your recent win and forming government in Anguilla. How's it been? How have the first few months been of uh, governing? Well, thank you, Chris. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. And certainly the first uh, three months or so have been, uh, it's been a whirlwind, I must say. You know, we have the, the pandemic that we came into uh, and that is still governing but um, the team that I have, uh, especially, uh, you know, we have a good mix of young and um, those who are not so young who have made up the administration. And I, and I think that's what helps us, the energy. Um, I, I'm surrounded by persons who are capable and, um, you know, giving them their portfolios, they make me look good. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we, we wish you all the success uh, as you move forward and, and obviously to working with you and your team as we uh, continue work with the, uh, the residence programs in Anguilla, which we're going to be talking about uh, today. So for those of people watching today who haven't been to Anguilla, can you give us a, a quick introduction about the island and, and what the main attractions are? Oh, certainly. Uh, Anguilla, it's, it's a piece of paradise here in the Caribbean Sea. Um, the most northerly of the Leeward Islands. And uh, what we are most uh, proud of is our people, um, caring, hospitable, and welcoming to visitors. And uh, we like Anguilla to be called, uh, you know, our island, your home. And that's, that's um, how we have uh, packaged it. Uh, the things uh, we have beautiful, 33 uh, white sand beaches. Uh, the, it's always sunny here in Anguilla. Um, you have access to the sea, the sand, and the sun. And then from there, we have the people who care. And, and that's what is attractive about Anguilla. And um, we're small, but that's good because um, it, we form a community and we like to have new people come in so we can learn um, you know, new cultures and talk with people. And that, that's what's, what's uh, attractive about Anguilla. Yeah, I've been very privileged to, to visit on uh, numerous occasions and, you know, I'm always uh, amazed by the quality of some of the restaurants, the accommodations and, you know, having that high end living, but also being able to, to sort of kick back and be more relaxed, you know, whereas as opposed to other islands where there's more of a hustle and bustle of tourism. Um, you know, you'll know with Select Anguilla's tagline of reclusively exclusive, it allows people to, you know, enjoy and, uh, you know, the, the, all the benefits of, uh, of being in the Caribbean, but without the hustle and bustle you may see on other islands. Yes, uh, and you're correct about that. The, uh, the uh, luxurious accommodations, um, hotels, um, villas, and we also have exquisite cuisine, and that is something mm -hmm. that Anguilla is known for. And people come back year after year uh, just to, to be with us, to eat with us, and, and, and to have relaxation because, as you said, Anguilla, there's no hustle and bustle. It's just uh, tranquil, laid back, and that, that's what Anguilla uh, offers. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, it's it's very relevant in the current situation we're facing now with the pandemic is we're seeing a lot of people exploring, you know, other jurisdictions of where they could spend time if they were uncomfortable in their in their home country. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, we're seeing obviously the United States, we're seeing the UK is going through a bit of a spike now as well. Um, you know, if people are looking at this, um, can you give an idea of how you've dealt with COVID, what the situation's like, and, you know, what are the benefits for people who want to have extended time in Anguilla to maybe um, use that time to uh, be outside of the, the reach of COVID? We know Anguilla has been voted the number one island in the Caribbean four years in a row. And, and I think that's because, uh, you know, administrations uh, have always uh, looked out and cared for the people. So in terms of COVID, uh, we had three cases diagnosed in March. Uh, since then, uh, they have recovered there's been no further cases uh, in Anguilla. Uh, and that's because our health team, they followed the science and the epidemiology. Uh, mm. We closed the borders early in March when uh, the pandemic uh, became known. Uh, World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic on March 11th. We closed on the 20th. And since then, uh, we've gone to a phased reopening uh, process. Uh, we Persons coming in, mostly repatriated uh, persons, Anguillians who wanted to come back home, and they would have to get a negative test three to five days before coming, tested on arrival. And then we had uh, those persons would stay in um, quarantine or stay in place uh, for 14 days, retested at the 14th day. And if they're negative, then they're allowed to go out into the, um, the community. We've since and also um, opened up um, for villa tourists and also uh, those who are digital nomads who mm. want to come. And we've got some interest in that, but our real um, reopening is gonna be on November 1st. Uh, persons and uh, visitors will still have to uh, fill out a pre-approval application, come in with a negative test three to five days before arrival, be tested on arrival, and then it can stay at hotels, villas. Uh, there will be some limitation of movement. Uh, <clears throat> they can do um, beach activities, water activities, golfing, and go to restaurants on the property that they would be on. And we are now also looking at um, standalone restaurants that would pass certification uh, by the health and environmental teams. And so it's very controlled circumstance, but that's to protect the people. And as I said, uh, we have been dubbed COVID, COVID free uh, since April of 2020. And there are not many countries in the world that can carry that, uh, that accolade. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you know, you, you touched on the digital nomads and, you know, we're seeing that um, that phenomenon taking place more and more. And I think it's it's worth emphasizing as well. There's excellent uh, communication links out of Anguilla. So if people are, you know, like we're doing today, you know, uh, discussing things remotely or conducting business remotely, you know, many people are now getting used to studying remotely as well. Um, can you make a comment about uh, how easy it is to do that from somewhere like Anguilla, where you've got these strong communication hubs in place? Uh, certainly. Uh, you know, in Anguilla, we've gone to communicating now, having meetings uh, on Zoom and Microsoft Teams and, and all the other platforms. Uh, we have excellent uh, internet services here in Anguilla. Uh, we have a good education system, uh, good health care. Um, the opportunity for business development is, is just open um, here in Anguilla. And so um, everyone here is helpful in helping people to adjust uh, to the conditions. And, and that, that's very important because we see now a role where Anguillians are usually friendly, they, you know, hug type, but we realize in this um, new new age that we can't be as uh, as close but we still want to convey that we are um, hospitable and uh, we will continue to to be that for those who come to visit and live with us yes well I and mean, you're right i mean family and community are so important on the island and that's uh, the warmth of the people is something that you you feel as soon as you arrive so no i i certainly agree with you on that and 
you know, it's uh, certainly for myself, you know, I'm looking forward to being back on Ireland at some point, you know, I think with those of us who are used to, to traveling frequently and, uh, you know, are finding it uh, difficult, you know, because you want to, um, you know, enjoy the things you're used to being able to do. And, uh, you know, it's always a joy for me, for me to be in the Caribbean and, uh, you know, Anguilla is uh, definitely one of my, my favorite spots. So hopefully we'll see each other in person in, uh, in the coming months. So um, now, the, uh, the other thing that um, I wanted to touch on here is um, the consortium that we're going to be breaking down in our um, presentation today that's come together to create Select Anguilla and the, um, and the program, the two different residence programs. I use, how have you found, um, I know we're, we're quite a new partners, if you like, because of the change of government. How are you finding that experience so far? Well, I, I find that uh, the consortium of Latitude, Orton Group, and Apex Capital, which is assisting us with the Select Anguilla um, Agency for uh, Residency uh, or Economic Residency Program, um, found very, um, very um, helpful in helping me to understand exactly uh, the program, how it works. I uh, you know vast experience in the area and can give expert advice to interested individuals and families. Uh, I think that um, we've gotten off to a good start uh, understanding, uh, you know, how this uh, program would work. And uh, persons who want to, you know, invest in a home here, uh, making uh, significant, uh, you know, contributions uh, to, to Anguilla as a place um, to reside. And I think that um, it's very helpful to have this consortium, uh, which has the experience uh, to get us there. Uh, we know with the program that uh, persons can become permanent residents uh, by investing in a home or, or making a significant monetary uh, contribution to a capital development fund, um, or they can apply as tax residents. And, and so the, uh, the many options that are available uh, makes this program one that, that I think would appeal to, um, to many uh, who want to have another place uh, to live. And certainly, you know, we um, encourage persons to come and visit Anguilla. And um, I'm certain that we will make the stay worthwhile and that they will want to call Anguilla their home. Yeah, and like I said, it's important that people can fully understand the benefits of the island and all that it can, it can bring, especially in these uncertain times where people are looking, you know, very seriously about having a, a footprint somewhere else in the world. Premier, I know we will wrap up here. Any final uh, comments uh, you'd like to um, you'd like to make to our audience today? Yes, yeah, certainly. I um, want to say you know thank you for the time that you spend, uh, and also um, give consideration uh, to Anguilla because, as I said, um, our island becomes your home, and you'll be treated like family here. But you also will have a product uh, that you'll be proud of, and I think the consortium uh, will make sure. Uh, that your interests are well served. And so again, uh, thank you uh, for being here. And also I hope that um, you gain a lot and learn more about um, you know, our little paradise, uh, which we are willing to share with you. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> very good. Thank you, Premier. We appreciate your time today. We're going to hear from Eric Major. Eric is the CEO of Latitude Group and, and like myself is a 25 year veteran in this industry. Eric, can you give us a, a summary of how uh, this program came to be in Anguilla? Yes, uh, thanks for having me, Chris, with pleasure and, and welcome to all our attendees uh, to this webinar. Well, it's indeed an interesting journey going back to just under three years ago where an industry colleague uh, uh, of ours uh, approached me to see whether we could lend a hand to Anguilla, who at the time was looking in developing a residency program. And we were uh, just keen to, to see what uh, areas we could explore for them, uh, knowing that, you know, residency is, is both, you know, from an immigration point of view, one aspect where people actually go and settle and enjoy life there. Um, but we were also thinking uh, that this could be an opportunity for Anguilla to, to develop what we feel is a burgeoning area of investment migration, which is tax residency. And partially had this idea through where I was living at the time in Jersey and the Channel Islands and both Jersey and Guernsey have programs de devised to attract 
high net worth individuals to become resident, but mostly tax resident there. We have Switzerland that has a well developed for many, many years now, the lump sum forfait tax regime. And we know that this is an area which these global nomads who have businesses and affairs and activities all around the world have to choose to be a tax resident somewhere because you can't get bank accounts or commercial relationships or, or you know, deal with governments unless you declare yourself to be a tax resident somewhere in the world, particularly in a post-CRS world, as you know. Um, and so we thought this is an area that Anguilla ought to focus on, given that in the region there was no, no jurisdiction that really had focused on this. And not forgetting that Anguilla is a British overseas territory, so it could not enter into the realm of its neighbors of the citizenship by investment program simply because it, it, it doesn't have jurisdictional authority over citizenship matters which are left for the UK to, to, uh, to opine on. So it was going to be uh, two programs in the end, as you know, Chris, we developed a great residency by investment program in a, in a tax residency program. And we felt at this point, let's engage with like-minded industry uh, players with whom we had uh, commercial relationships in the past. And we thought they could help us with their individual networks and their individual uh, strengths really and, and corporate strengths, uh, thinking of Arton Group, who's part of our consortium has great marketing uh, team that, that, that could help really expose all that Anguilla has to offer as the exclusively reclusive jurisdiction that it is. It's such a lovely island and we thought, okay, they can help develop a brand for that. And we brought in uh, Apex Capital with Nuri Katz who had had quite a bit of experience um, in his years, both in, in, uh, in Russia CIS, but also in the Caribbean on the real estate and developer side of the equation. And as you know, with residency programs, you got to live in an abode in some form of property uh, to declare yourself a resident. So we knew he could help us, uh, that Nuri could help us in that area. So between Latitude and the Artin Group and Apex Capital, we knew we had a, a trifecta of a network uh, of a group that could really uh, expand in this industry of ours, the tax residency concept. And in terms of uh, who would apply for this, Eric, what, what, what would be the profile of a client you think who could benefit from these different programs? Good question. Um, and as I said, because we, do, we have two programs in mind here, a residency uh, for immigration purposes right now would be catering to what is already existing contingents on the island of Americans and Canadians and, and Brits and a few Western Europeans who know Anguilla who were there previously before we brought in these provisions were there simply as visitors had no immigration status per se. So now they can acquire um, this, this visa that eventually brings them towards uh, full on settlement if they wish to do so. So that's one market, but the one that was new that we were developing quite excited about is tax residency. And this again is, your global nomads who have choices. Yes, they could be in Jersey and Guernsey, they could be in in, uh, in Switzerland, or they could settle in, in Singapore. But we thought for those who are interested in the Caribbean, of course, you got the North American market. You got your Canadians, obviously, who are obviously in a high tax paying jurisdiction, same with the UK and, and French nationals and Dutch and, and Germans and the like, who could be living this type of, this type of lifestyle want to bring it um, you know, closer to, to, let's say, what the Caribbean have to offer. And if you've been to Anguilla, as I know you have, you know how amazingly beautiful Anguilla is and the lifestyle that it offers and the quality of the infrastructure and the resort settings that they have this is, is unlike anything in the Caribbean. And I do mean that because I've seen all the islands of the Caribbean and Anguilla is quite uniquely uh, prestigious uh, in terms of its offering. So I think for the right client, who is looking to establish that anchor, that tax anchor in a jurisdiction. Um, Anguilla is now entering as one of the possible solution that's effective and efficient. Uh, and what we've discovered, again, in terms of timing, I think COVID is bringing this, this sense that uh, you can run your affairs uh, overseas and off a laptop. And so we're gonna see, I think, this amalgamation and this coalition of both residency pit for immigration purposes and tax because um, even though these clients may be spending less than 90 days, some of these global nomads spend less, less than 90 days anywhere, 
uh, I got a feeling that once they discover Anguilla, they're going to want to be spending a lot more time than that because it's that unique of a place, as you know, it's really a spectacular setting. Well, I think you touched on that 90 day there. That is very, very important when people who are nomadic or have several different touch points around the world, you know, it's not always where they are, but where they are not, right? To make sure that they don't have too big of a footprint somewhere else that would trigger themselves a tax resident in a different jurisdiction. That's right. I mean, uh, you know, we're not tax experts at Latitude and we always start our presentations that way, but to say that what we all do know as a general rule is you spend six months or more in a country, you're likely to be a tax, in fact, almost certainly going to be a tax resident. But if you're spending between 90, 285 days a year in a place, you're also likely to be a tax residency, a resident if indeed you have these other badges and these other connection. But there is this reality of, of, of a clientele these days that they are uh, you know, able to, to, to go from one jurisdiction to the, uh, to the next because of business, because of personal lifestyle and, and spend that, you know, 91 days or 120 days. And we're saying, consider Anguilla that, you know, the technological infrastructure to run your business remotely is there. The lifestyle, the restaurants, the resorts, which is again, fascinating as you'll hear more about throughout this presentation, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a burgeoning area that we're going to see a lot more of its neighboring islands develop. But uh, as they say, uh, the spoils go to those who, who launch first and we're quite proud to have been associated, uh, the consortium and uh, the three of us quite proud to have been associated with this project. Eric, thanks so much for your comments and, uh, and your time and expertise today. And uh, we look forward to, to watching the, the evolution of this program. My pleasure. Thank you, Chris. All the best. Yes. Armand Artin, um, who is the founder of Artin, Artin Capital and a fellow consortium member. Arden Capital is a leading global financial advisory firm that specializes in investor programs for residents and citizenship. And Armin and his team are very well known in our industry. Um, Armin, uh, great to see you again. Can you give us uh, a bit of an insight on the industry as you see it today, you know, in light of what's been happening around the world, and also expand on how you see uh, tax residence programs are becoming more relevant and, and in demand in this space? Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And uh, um, nice uh, to be part of uh, this presentation, your excellencies, your esteemed guests. Um, let me start with a small review of uh, this industry and where uh, it stands today. And considering its history, we might project where it's going to go. So the state of the industry uh, for the last 13 years since I joined um, the Canadian Investor Program has evolved. And um, I would say it has reached the maturity level where we have um, a very high number of programs, very high number of um, offerings, players and countries. Demand has increased of about 10 to 15% from uh, uh, normally the traditional uh, markets, uh, such as the Asia, um, China always being a majority of uh, the demand uh, produ production of uh, high net worth clients that over the last 20 years have really outpassed uh, any other countries in terms of creation of, of this uh, specific group of uh, individuals and wealthy families. Uh, but of course, Middle East has become more important considering uh, the instability in, in the region. Uh, and now we're seeing completely new markets opening up, uh, such as uh, Africa in general, from Nigeria to South Africa and Kenya. And uh, the industry has evolved because as well, I think we're reaching maturity where we understand that we need to make some standards and we need to adhere, adhere to some um, common practices of the industry. So coming as a late, uh, I would say, player, um, Anguilla has the benefit of really looking at this specter of the last 20 years of the industry and really picking the best examples and the worst examples not to repeat of other programs. Um, so we're very happy to be part of this uh, consortium and to have advised the government of how to set up very transparent, um, a very uh, focused, very niche product, which I believe um, the COVID will only help uh, in positioning as a very unique proposition for wealthy families around the world. So since the 90s until now, as you know, um, there is 25 countries that have a very defined programs for residency or citizenship based on a specific criteria of investment. And Anguilla is one of those countries. 
However, since the crisis of 2008, um, what we have seen is really the doubling in the last 10 years uh, of the number of countries. And that is, of course, understandable since the financial crisis of 2008 really put a lot of European countries um, between, you know, choosing very high debt or, uh, you know, begging uh, and waiting for euro funds to support their economies. So they had to come up with these innovative ways to attract foreign investment. And this is what came into Malta, Cyprus, Bulgaria, Hungary, Portugal, Greece, uh, eight countries that uh, really within Europe, within that space of 10 years have come up with programs. Um, of course, we're seeing expansion into the Pacific Islands, Eastern Balkans right now, um, more, I would say, uh, Central and, and uh, Latin American countries looking into it. And it's only normal and logical that um, in, in a post-COVID world with uh, the UV or there is no other way to describe the recession that is going to expect us in the next years. Uh, these programs are very relevant for countries where they will have a self-dependency uh, on their future without uh, really have to wait for years on IMF, World Bank and other international agency to support um, their, their basic needs. Especially in countries where uh, tourism is a major factor, uh, like Anguilla, I think that um, the program has a very uh, unique proposition and a very important role to play in the recovery of the country. Um, another important factor, which I think will really uh, be impactful in terms of the, in terms of the demand, is that we'll see in, in the Western world where this program is really targeted for, uh, considering that uh, the uh, Willa Residence Program does not provide uh, a path to citizenship. Uh, it's really for families that are looking to, one, relocate, spend some time, have a second home in uh, this island, and a genuine link with the country in order to benefit from its tax uh, uh, program. I think that it will very well fit within the worlds we are going to live in the next years. Um, a safe place where people and families can relocate in their second home uh, and do their staycation or work from distance uh, in a very safe environment. The small population of Anguilla and the positioning in the Caribbean makes it very attractive for uh, exactly the kind of clients we're talking. And uh, the tax which will definitely increase in the home countries, starting from US, Canada to the European countries, uh, who eventually will have to look into where they're gonna bridge this uh, a trillions of dollars and euros that they're spending in, in this recovery plan of the COVID. Uh, there is no magic formula, they will have to increase taxes. So this is where I think um, in the next months or years, uh, clients will be much more looking when they're comparing these 25 programs, which one has these benefits of safe environment where they could relocate, spend six months per year, um, and really have a tax positioning that will justify from all international uh, laws and, and uh, current standards, uh, a very beneficial tax uh, situation, which I think Anguilla is perfectly positioned to, uh, to present. Uh, so this is where we stand and I believe that uh, we'll see this trend realizing better sooner than later um, with uh, probably next year's uh, first you know, elections from the US to Germany where we're going to see this impact on uh, tax um, programs and, and new taxation very shortly being implemented that will translate I think into a demand. So depending who your clients are, um, depending where they're based, but any European countries or Canada or UK, countries that don't tax on citizenships like the US, I think um, this audience have to be very careful in understanding the tax comparison between these programs and what it means as a benefit to your clients. So again, we, uh, we're very happy and proud to be part of this consortium uh, um, where, again, it's a showcase of how um, competitors in the, in the industry can gather together to the benefit of a single country and bring their know-how experience for many years and diversification of their teams and expertise. Um, and I believe this is what we're doing for Anguilla. So uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, I'm here to answer any further questions. Thank you, Armand. And, and I think it's, it, you know, the, the point you make is, is, is very relevant is about the, the increase in tax and that we're expecting that to be uh, to be coming up, you know, as countries are looking to recoup a lot of the expenditure uh, due to COVID. 
And you know, whether it's wealth taxes in Canada or capital gains tax increases in the UK, people are looking at ways to structure their affairs um, that, to make sure that they can, uh, you know, that they can, you know, legally minimize their tax burden. And this is something that, you know, Anguilla, as, as we know, has really positioned itself to cater for that niche type of client um, who, you know, is going to be spending a certain amount of time in Anguilla, but also may have other, um, other connections around the world, more of that, uh, that digital nomad that we're seeing. Um, because as, as you rightly said, you know, Americans being taxed on citizenship, you know, wouldn't necessarily benefit from the, the high value tax resident program in Anguilla. But for those coming from high tax jurisdictions, such as Canada, such as the UK and other European countries, it does, you know, fit that, um, that solution for many people. And as we're coming up to the end of the calendar year, people are wondering what is 2021 going to look like from a tax basis. And so the, the timing of this webinar is, uh, is excellent as people are starting to get their affairs in order and seeing where can we uh, structure ourselves in the coming, uh, coming months and years to be as tax efficient as possible. So the, um, you know, I take on board your points. I think they're excellent points. And you know, as, as we know, when we went through the journey with Anguilla, because it's a British overseas territory, it doesn't have the, uh, the ability to offer uh, a citizenship by investment program, as we've seen in the neighboring islands in the Caribbean. So, you know, it's, uh, it's been very innovative in terms of finding, you know, a couple of residence programs that can meet the needs of these uh, specific clients. Thank you, Chris. And I'll just add one more, uh, unfortunately, tragic number, but we have to consider it. Uh, with one, more than 1.1 million of debt from the COVID, uh, mostly in, in, uh, in the countries of high taxation, a lot of people are going to wake up on the inheritance uh, taxation, which will become very important. So it's no longer only where, um, where should I live in order to minimize my tax, but where should I die in order to be able to really, um, you know, leave the most of my work and my success to, to the next generations. And European countries are really going into a wealth taxation of inheritance. Um, and uh, again, very few countries uh, are, are still uh, very open-minded and, and leaving that uh, you know, inheritance tax to zero, which will become very important into the higher group of uh, ultra high net worthy uh, families and investors around the world who's gonna start looking into these uh, elements when choosing a program. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's been such a reality check that, you know, uh, you know, is making people consider these things because they maybe hadn't considered it to the extent they are now. And the pandemic has obviously opened up a lot of people's eyes and realized, look, maybe I'm not as prepared or as organized as I should be. And this, uh, this, uh, this, this wake up call that the pandemic is bringing is allowing people to do that. And, you know, as you say, Anguilla fits, uh, fits a space in these uh, structures and portfolios that people are looking at. Thank you very much. And um, as we always say, when there is a disaster and, and crisis around the world, there's always an opportunity. Um, so we try to uh, see as this uh, as an opportunity for, uh, for Anguilla and for many families around the world to put order and to uh, really rebuild their countries by putting uh, an impact to, to society in general. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Armin. Lovely to talk to you. Pleasure. So we've heard about all the wonderful things that Anguilla can offer. But now we have to figure out how do we actually qualify? How do we get there? What's the legalities behind the program and who's actually gonna be administering this? So I'm delighted now to introduce Ms. Janelle Lake, who is the operations manager of Select Anguilla. And she's gonna take us through the two different programs and how they work. Janelle, over to you. Greetings from Anguilla. I am Janelle Lake, Operations Manager of Select Anguilla, and I'll be sharing with you the details of Anguilla's residency by investment programs, namely the High Value Resident Program and the Permanent Residence Program. Just a short reintroduction to Anguilla. Anguilla is a British overseas territory located in the Eastern Caribbean. It's about 1,200 miles away from Miami. It's about a four, five hour flight away. Our main industry is tourism. And in fact, this year, Anguilla was voted number one island in the Caribbean by traveling leisure for the fourth consecutive time. Anguilla's unspoiled natural beauty, friendly people, exclusive, exclusivity and privacy offered to our high quality accommodation and especially now our low population density make Anguilla a great place to visit and to live. 
Angola has had zero cases of COVID-19, thankfully, since the end of April, and since mid-June has been declared COVID-free by the World Health Organization. Anguilla is a politically stable country, with, which is also a low-tax jurisdiction, and people here enjoy a very laid-back lifestyle. Select Anguilla is the agency, as would have been mentioned previously, that is responsible for processing all of the residency by investment applications. I'll now go into the two programs. In Anguilla, luxurious living meets financial freedom with the high value resident program, which provides a tax planning solution and the permanent residence program, which allows you to stay in Anguilla and enjoy the benefits of being here for as long as you like. First, I'll go through the high value resident program. The High Value Resident Program, or the HVR, is for highly successful investors and entrepreneurs who live very international lives, your global citizens, your digital nomads. In order to qualify for this program, there's a requirement to first speak with your tax advisor and find out how you can exit your current debt jurisdiction properly before you make the move to make Anguilla your new tax home. An annual lump sum payment of $75,000 is payable that covers your annual worldwide tax income. And upon application, you'll need to be able to demonstrate that you can make this annual payment for five for the first five consecutive years. You'll also have to make a declaration that you are not spending more than 183 year, days in any other country. It is important to ensure that tax residency isn't triggered anywhere else in order to qualify for tax residency in Anguilla. This option also includes property ownership. And the value of the property needs to be at least $400,000. And this is inclusive of land valued at at least 100 US thousand dollars. And this could qualify an individual with a family of up to four persons. Anguillian tax residents would be required to establish other genuine links to Anguilla, including opening bank accounts and joining social clubs, becoming a part of the community. 45 days are required to be spent in Anguilla each year, and these may be spent non-consecutively. And of course, individuals would have to remain in good standing with, throughout the residency period. The benefits of the HVR program, once you become an, an Anguillian high value resident, you just make a simple fixed payment of $75,000 Annually, we have a number of reputable trust and wealth management firms in Anguilla, so you can protect your assets and secure your future. Life in Anguilla is laid back, easygoing, with warm people, you fit right in. It's a place where you can feel free to belong and be free. And especially with COVID-19 under control so far in Anguilla, it's a safe haven for you and your family. The permanent residency program offers two options by which you may enjoy unlimited stays in Anguilla. One of them is to purchase or construct approved real estate, or you can make contribution to the Capital Development Fund. I'll explain each of these options in turn. So the real estate option, Anguilla offers a wide array of high quality luxury properties, including those with oceanfront, ocean view, beachfront, there's also vacant land with these positionings where you can construct your dream home and have wonderful views of the Atlantic Ocean or the Caribbean Sea. The property types include villas, condos, hotel residences, and of course, 
you can construct your own home. There are also a number of high-end concierge and property management services available so that while you're away, you can still have your property kept in good care. The require the you can purchase purchase a home from seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which would qualify a family of up to four persons. And for each additional family member that you would want to bring along with you, there's an additional requirement of one hundred thousand dollars per person. After your property is purchased, you must maintain this property for a minimum of five, five years after the purchase date. And Angula, Angula's version of the donation is the Capital Development Fund designed to encourage economic growth, development, and diversification by providing an alternative channel to foreign direct investment. This is the quicker and simpler option and allows the principal applicant to make handsome contribution of just $150,000. And for every family member that the, app, the main applicant wishes to have accompany them, there's a fee of $50,000 US dollars. Why Anguilla? Well, you can call Paradise Home. Anguilla is a place where when, when you get here, you can just exhale you can belong with our friendly people and you can be free enjoy financial freedom and the opportunity to live life on your own terms bring the whole family along and you can work and study remotely the beach awaits you anguilla offers the opportunity to eventually attain british citizenship first you need to spend at least five years in anguilla after which, having met the presence and character requirements, you'll be able to become a British Overseas Territory citizen. And shortly after that, you can become a British citizen if, of course, you are already not a British citizen. And Angola, as we previously mentioned, is a low tax jurisdiction. There's no capital gains tax, net worth tax, inheritance or gift taxes, and no corporation tax. So it's a great place to have business and to enjoy personal tax benefits. In order to apply, the principal applicant must be at least 18 years of age and they must make a proposed investment into whichever program they are interested in, whether the high value resident or one of the permanent residence options, or perhaps even a combination of the two. And all persons involved in the application must not be a subject of criminal investigation and should be of sound character and good health. Family members are welcome to apply with the principal applicant, and these include the spouse, children under 18, children under age 26 in pursuit of tertiary education full-time, and adult children or children of any age who are mentally or physically impaired and fully supported by the parents, and children of the principal applicant's spouse are also eligible to come on and enjoy life in Anguilla. The application fees, these are $3,000 for a family of up to four persons. And for each additional family member that you would want to bring along, it's $500 per person. Due diligence fees also apply. These are $7,500 for each individual 18 and over, and $2,500 for each child from the age of 12 to 17. So for a family of four or for a single applicant, the application fees payable upon submission of the application would be $10,500. And for a family of four, it would be $23,000 payable to select Anguilla upon application. 
In order to submit the application, this must be done through an authorized agent, and these are lawyers, company managers, real estate agents, or developers. These persons are also able to provide related services so that you can make either one of them your, your one-stop shop for everything you need to do in relation to your application. For a list of authorized agents, you can visit our website and check out the authorized agents page. Anyone interested in becoming a local authorized agent may contact us for further details. The applications having reached Select Anguilla take approximately three months and applicants must undergo stringent due diligence checks, including enhanced due diligence by third party due diligence service providers where that extent is necessary. The final decision is not made by Select Anguilla, but by the executive council who initially grants conditional approval after which the investment must be completed within given time frames. For instance, there is a time frame of 30 days to transfer the funds for the capital development fund if that application type is chosen. And having completed the investment, final approval is granted whereby the permanent residence permits or the tax certificate as the case may be is issued. Government fees also apply. And any applicant who is subject of criminal investigation poses national security or reputational threats or risks to Anguilla will not be approved. We want Anguilla to continue to be the upstanding country that it is with wonderful citizens and for it to, be continue, to continue to be a safe place. If you have any questions, Chris and I will take your questions about either the high value resident program or the permanent residence program a little later on in the program. Until then, Anguilla is a special place. It's a place where you can make it your home, you can be safe. And as Premier Repsom would have said earlier on in the program, make our island your home. Over to you, Chris. Thank you, Janelle. Uh, very comprehensive and, uh, you know, it's clear to see it's a relatively straightforward process, um, you know, once people recognize that Anguilla is the place uh, for them. Um, and as you mentioned, uh, we're going to have a Q&A session shortly. And if you do have some questions, please use the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen, and then we can have them uh, ready to go. So again, thank you, Janelle, and we'll speak to you again shortly for the Q&A session. By the Honorable Kyle Hodge. He is the Minister for Economic Development, Commerce, Information Technology, Environment and Natural Resources in Anguilla. So he's a gentleman with a lot on his plate and uh, he's going to talk to us a little bit more now about, uh, about Anguilla and some of the opportunities as it relates to, uh, to economic uh, development and investment. Welcome Minister Hodge. Hi Chris, how are you doing? Good, good. Rather be where you are in the warm sun than where I am at the moment, but uh, hopefully the world will open up again soon and, uh, and, and we can join you down there. Fingers crossed, Chris. <laughs> let's hope so, let's hope so. And, and on that note, uh, we heard from the Premier earlier, the border is opening in, uh, on November 1st, so exciting times for the island to, to open up again. And uh, you've also got um, a new incentive, which is the 12-month um, the welcome visa. Can you give me a quick, uh, quick overview about that and how that's been well received for people coming to Anguilla? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the question, Chris. Um, like you mentioned, um, the Honorable Premier, Dr. Ellis Webster, he would have mentioned that Anguilla has been COVID free uh, since since May of 2020. You know, in light of this, you know, we are in tools to diversify our tourism sector, you know, welcoming persons seeking a safe place to live and to work remotely. You know, about two months ago, we introduced our our digital nomad it's a 12 month vacation program and it allows successful applicants you know to work remotely from an angola and enjoy the island's beautiful beaches bluffs and bays 
um, you know, persons can apply by this website, Chris. Um, it's www.ivisitanguilla.com. So that's the portal, www.ivisitanguilla.com. You know, of course, there are certain health protocols that must be followed upon entering Anguilla. But these, this, this program, it extends to families. So persons can bring their children um, and we can make arrangements for schooling. It can either be done at home, you can homeschool, or you can utilize our private schools that we have, or you can also utilize the public schools. You know, so it's a 12 month program. And upon expiration, um, there's an option to also renew. So that's, that's one of the programs that we have, but also we have the residency by investment program, you know, and that presents an opportunity to, to become a permanent resident by investing a certain amount of, of cash, by investing in, in a certain development project, uh, property in Angola. So, you know, we are pleased to, to have this program which is being operated by, by Select Angola. And it's an, it's an agency established by the government of Angola and that's in collaboration with a, with a consortium consisting of Latitude Group, Arton Group, and Apex Capital. So, you know, despite the challenges that we face with COVID, uh, the government of Angola, in, in collaboration with this consortium, is trying, we're trying our best to, to get things going. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, I think every, you know, many jurisdictions are trying to find creative ways, you know, to attract, you know, people to come to the island. And the nice thing with the welcome visa is that it it's almost gives you a try before you buy type of concept. Right. So right. people can come in, you know, really understand the island, get a sense of the warmth, the, the people, the opportunities, even small yeah. things like the connectivity. You talked right. about people working remotely, you know, knowing that there are good uh, communication links that uh, that yeah. people can do so. So I think that's uh, that's a, another you know um, another positive angle for Anguilla in terms of welcoming people and obviously keeping it uh, as you rightly say uh, properly contained so that you're getting the right type of people who are going to be able to enjoy all the benefits of the island. That's correct. And, and can, I'm, can I'm working for company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's well you know we've I think we're all tired of the term the new normal but it is the reality right is it that is everybody's is. adjusted and um, you know people are figuring out how to get things done from a remote setting and uh, still right. be productive and efficient. Right. So, so that's all good. Can you give a, an example of something unique to Anguilla or some things that may uh, separate it from, from other islands in the Caribbean or why we would uh, consider Anguilla over another island? Um, I, I think it's, it's more or less the, the, the nature of, of, of the people. You know, it's, it's the friendliness, um, the, the, the genuineness of the people. Um, you come to Anguilla and you're instantly treated like family. You know, uh, you, you, wherever you come from, you know, you can come from a, a thousand miles away, you can come from 10,000 miles away. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter um, your class. You know, once you arrive to a, a country like Anguilla, you know, you're, you're treated, you know, at, at a high standard. Mm. You know, we, we value service um, and we value um, an experience. It's all about showcasing what Anguilla has to offer. It's all about giving you an experience of a lifetime that would have you to come back. You know, we, we, we just value your, your presence and, and that's what it's about for us in Anguilla. Yeah, and as I mentioned to the Premier, I've been very privileged to have uh, visited Anguilla on numerous occasions and it is, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a well-kept secret, you know, in, in the region, that's for sure, you know, and, uh, you know, I think that's something that more and more people will start to discover it as uh, you know, they become more aware of these types of programs. Oh, so, yeah. so on a, on a more practical point then, so if I'm looking at Anguilla, um, can you give an idea of uh, some of the opportunities as it relates to, to foreign direct investment or why people would be looking to invest their money in Anguilla? Um, the first opportunity would, of course, be the opportunity to conduct business in the number one island in the Caribbean. You know, and just don't, don't take my word for it, Chris. Um, if, if you just research Travel and Leisure's number one Caribbean island for four, four consecutive years, and you will see for yourself that Anguilla is that number one spot. You know, so the government of Anguilla um, welcomes foreign direct investment in the green and the blue economies, technology-based industries, of course, uh, fintech and financial services. Additionally, as Anguilla 
you know, we are known for our luxury tourism product. So the government of Angola continues to embrace all investments in our tourism infrastructure. And that also extends to, to niche areas like, like a marina. You know, that is something that, that we are definitely looking at, at, at developing in Angola um, pretty much any time now. Um, and other innovative and unique offerings. So investments in the development of national infrastructure is also welcome, um, whether it's port development, whether it's airport development, whether it's, it's our road infrastructure. These are all developments and, and investments that are possible in Angola. And of, of course, it, it would involve a, a public-private partnership agreement. Um, so that's that. And you know, further identifying diverse areas for investment, we are pleased to have implemented the Angola Special Economic Zone Act 2020. You know, this invites investors to pursue the development of special economic zones to conduct business. You know, through special economic zones, um, approved SEZ developers and companies would benefit from a range of incentives and government support. So this is something, Chris, that is pretty, is pretty much new. And we are developing a portal that will have more information as it relates to, to our special economic zone uh, pretty soon. Yeah, and they, these are all wonderful initiatives I know that the, the government's bringing out. And it's, as you rightly say, you've got to find a way to separate yourselves, you know, within the region. Um, right. You know, tourism aside, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, very clear. It's one of the unique islands in the Caribbean, not only yeah. for the natural beauty, but also, um, you know, the, the concentration of high-end real estate developments, restaurants, and everything of that nature. So when somebody is coming to visit Anguilla for the first time, and, and I yeah. know I was, I was blown away, you know, right. by, you know, the, the, the quality um, and quantity, let's say, of, of quality uh, resorts, uh, villas, uh, and restaurants, which I don't yeah. think many people are aware of. And I right. believe there's a there's a statistic like per capita, it's got probably the highest concentration, I think, of luxury um, on the island. You know, whether you're looking oh. at, you know, high end, you know, from your, you know, well, I, I probably shouldn't name names at this point, but I know you've got <laughs> a lot of high end developments on the island yeah. Yeah. that, yeah. Um, you know, people d don't don't realize until they actually visit. And um, and so, are there other? You've you've touched on obviously the the, the economic zone, the marina. Any other firm, further plans that the government has to stimulate the economy that um, that, that we can expect? You know, um, taking into consideration, Chris, the the current social, political, and economic adjustments being made across the globe. You know, since the onset of of COVID, you know, we are in the process of of identifying sectors that can be incentivized to facilitate growth within the domestic economy, you know, to also underpin our efforts to achieve sustainability and self-sufficiency. So we are certainly investing more in our, in our fishing zone, and we are also investing more in, in food security. And, you know, Chris, that, that ties in with, with tourism, because we can produce more locally, we can catch more locally, and if it's done locally, it's, it's fresher, the quality is better, and it, it, it goes with, with our theme, you know, in Angola, it's about quality, it's a quality state, quality resorts, quality restaurants. So we have to add quality food and quality, quality catch. So, you know, Angola boasts as being a tax neutral jurisdiction as well, you know, with zero corporate income, withholding our, our capital gains tax. You know, this in itself, it acts as a concession, as it puts the country on par with similar locations around the world. You know, we are also open to negotiate, negotiating customs duty exemptions on the various importations that developers will definitely need, you know, from time to time. So where possible, you know, we'll, we'll be having these conversations and, and granting other, other, other concessions, taking into consideration all the, the, the overall benefits to Angola, you know. So, Chris, you know, we're also updating our, our business license um, regime to promote business development, encourage innovation, and to improve the ease of doing business in Angola. Mm -hmm. So investors are, are more than welcome. Well, I think you, you summed it up well there that essentially Anguilla is open for business and is, uh, you know, has your arms wide open to receive um, the right type of people coming to the island 
that can uh, that can bring benefit and obviously enjoy all the um, the privileges that go with being based uh, in Anguilla, as you say, one of the well, certainly the top tourism destination in the Caribbean and uh, definitely somewhere to discover, you know, is uh, what I, is a message I would give to uh, many people right. I speak to is, uh, uh, you know, you got you to see it to believe it. It's such a wonderful ah, spot. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, Minister, I'll, I'll thank you for your time today. I know you're, you're a busy man and we do appreciate you taking the time uh, to support the webinar here and um, that we look forward to, to staying in touch and to, uh, to um, you know, bringing the right type of people to Anguilla and uh, enjoying, uh, enjoying the island. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. All right. You enjoy right. the rest of your day. Take care. All right. Take care. All right. Yeah. Bye -bye. And then as I'm going through the questions here, um, there is a, a reference to um, the low number of refusals. So the, the question comes in, in Europe, uh, the EU is making questions as to the low, no number of refusals for investment uh, citizenship applications. One, one point of clarification here, you know, these are residence programs, not, not citizenship programs. So, um, you know, each, each application obviously is assessed on its own merits, but um, the, it is not giving a direct pathway to citizenship as we see in other, uh, you know, the five other jurisdictions in the, uh, in the OECS in the Caribbean region. Uh, so as long as people understand that, that the, the rate of refusal, again, has to be uh, significant. You know, either they're a, a threat to national security, potentially a reputational risk for the island. Um, and obviously with residency, it's much easier to revoke than it would be with citizenship. So these are some of the things that, um, you know, that we look at. The due diligence, however, has been a, that has been applied to this is consistent to what would be used for a citizenship application. So we've actually increased the requirement and the threshold for diligence to make sure that it's as thorough uh, as possible. And I'll, I'll bring in Janelle quickly here. Um, do you want to expand on the, the due diligence, uh, Janelle, in terms of what's involved when somebody's uh, submitting an application? Of course, Chris. Um, when an application comes in, we do very thorough due diligence. We do our own in-house due diligence. We want to make sure, as previously mentioned, that no one is uh, threat to national security, that no one is going to cause any reputational risk to Anguilla. We, similar to the citizenship by investment programs, we also employ the use of third party due diligence service providers who have the reach to see where these people are to verify the information and make sure that the information that they have provided in, in, the, in, in the application is indeed true and correct and that we can comfortably go ahead and say, well, yes, we can approve these persons to be permanent residents or tax residents in Ecuador. Okay, wonderful. And, and um, you know, as we explained earlier, the, the, the role is to make recommendations, but the final decision rests with executive council. So there's, there's three different sets of eyes locally that will go through this before a decision is, uh, is rendered. And so it's, uh, it's in, again, ensuring that the highest level of integrity of the program will, uh, will, will be upheld. Janelle, I'm going to come back to you as well. We have a, uh, a question here as it relates to uh, combining the program, so combining both initiatives um, for uh, to, to acquire status. C can you comment on that, please? Yes, um, the an application can be made whereby individuals or families want to seek the high value resident and permanent resident program at the same time. In such a case. I explained that the application fees are, for instance, for a family of up to four, it's $3,000. It would be the one set of application fees, so those would not be doubled. Um, and this would allow individuals to really stay as long as they like, in addition to having tax residence. So the high value res resident requires you to stay for 45 days, but when you have both coupled up together, you can really stay as long as you like. Okay, wonderful. And, and a question we've had come in, I know you covered it, but if you can just uh, reconfirm uh, how much the investment is in order to qualify for permanent residency. Can you just uh, reconfirm this for one of our, uh, our attendees, please? Okay, I, I also forgot to mention with the previous question that 
Okay, both involve a uh, property purchase. For tax residency, you have to obtain a property that is valued at at least $400,000. But with permanent residency, you have to purchase a property that's valued at least at, at, at least $750,000. When you combine the two, you do not need to purchase two properties. You just purchase the one property for the $750,000. So therein lies the answer to the second question. So if the real estate option is being undertaken, then it is $750,000 to qualify a family of four. And there is a requirement of the investment being an additional $100,000 for any additional um, family member that may be coming along. If the capital development fund option is being sought, then it is $150,000 for the principal applicant. And for each additional family member, it is contribution of $50,000. So a family, a couple, it would be a contribution of $200,000, for instance. Okay, wonderful. So, uh, <laughs> while we're talking about money, uh, one of the questions is the relation to government stamp duties and other charges that's uh, associated with buying and selling property. Um, are you able to, to give an insight of what sort of uh, rates or what sort of add additional costs might be involved with a property purchase in Anguilla? The main... Um, the main government fee in that case would be the stamp duty, which I believe is about 12 and a half percent. Okay, so good to know. So when we're factoring in the overall cost that we have to have to allow for that as well. And um, one question that's also come up is there, are there any restricted nationalities of who can apply? So uh, the example asked was, was an Iranian. Um, is, the, is there any list of restricted nationalities who can apply for either of these programs? In general, anyone can apply, and that's why the due diligence is important. Um, so that's basically what it is. Anyone can apply. We do our due diligence. We make sure you are who you say you are. And if you are upstanding and meet all the requirements and you complete the investment, you will be approved. If not, well, you won't be approved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, absolutely, and uh, no, as you say, it's um, each each person is is assessed on their own merit, and and with the thorough due diligence process, it would allow for uh, for the right to for the wrong type of people not to get through uh, not to get through the process. Okay, very good. So we're, as we're sort of wrapping up here, um, a couple of questions are around: uh, Can we get a copy of the uh, presentation? Uh, the short answer to that is yes. Uh, a link will be provided as uh, with a follow up email. And uh, certainly if there are any more questions, um, you can again connect with us via that email or through, um, you know, to contact Select Anguilla and speak to Janelle directly. And then, uh, you know, we'd be more than happy to, uh, you know, to, to answer any further questions and, uh, and to receive any, any applicants who are looking to, uh, to use either of these programs um, as they move forward. So on behalf of all the panelists today and on behalf of the consortium, um, I would like to thank everybody who's uh, joined us today. Uh, some excellent questions and uh, we look forward to uh, working with everybody as we go forward. I hope you've learned a lot more about Anguilla than maybe you knew beforehand and realize uh, all of the benefits uh, of the program and uh, how it can benefit yourselves and your, and your clients. So I'll sign off by wishing everybody uh, to stay, stay healthy, keep well uh, during these difficult times. And uh, you know, please do get in touch if you have any further questions. Thank you very much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day.